use the uh, raise your hand reaction and I will uh, I'll call on you so we avoid everybody jumping all over uh, each other on the Zoom here. So at this point in time, I turn it over to Cardinals Chairman, Mr. Bill DeWitt Jr. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Well, we're obviously very pleased with the acquisition of Nolan Arenado. Uh, when we realized that Nolan was potentially available, we made every effort to secure him for the Cardinals uh, uh, for the upcoming season and uh, for a long time beyond that. Unfortunately, Nolan was interested in being a Cardinal, uh, which was important because he was on a, a no trade and he had an opt out after the first year. Uh, I give John Moselock and his team a lot of credit for working through a pretty complicated transaction, as you might imagine. And uh, it took several days to get it done. But in the end, uh, we, uh, we got our man, which is very exciting. As you know, when we took over the club 25 years ago, our goal was to maintain and enhance, and enhance the wonderful Cardinal franchise. Uh, through that period of time, um, over the years, way back in the Branch Rec era, uh, it was built on scouting, uh, player development, and bringing players to the big leagues. Uh, and it still is that way. But when you have an opportunity to get premium players from other clubs, for whatever reason, uh, it's incumbent upon us to bring them to St. Louis. And uh, many of them, of course, have contributed to ch our championships. Uh, to name a few, uh, Matt Holliday, Scott Rowland, Mark McGuire, Adam Wainwright, Jim Edmonds, Chris Carpenter. I'm sure I've missed a couple of top players there, but uh, that's a pretty good crew right there. Uh, and Nolan certainly uh, fits right into that group. And uh, as a premium player, uh, has been an outstanding uh, third baseman and hitter, winning multiple gold gloves and silver sluggers, and always been in the discussion of MVP. Uh, Nolan is joining us in the prime of his career, so we anticipate many uh, great seasons uh, of Nolan playing third base and the team better. Uh, the example they show, the effort they put in, well, it's what he thinks about, it's what drives him, it's what's made him a great player. And he will set an example, uh, which will not only uh, help our current players, but young players who, who see what he has to offer. Um, the Cardinals are fortunate to have fans who support us year in and year out. And we have an obligation to bring them the best team possible and the best players possible. And they make it possible. So uh, I want to thank the fans, as I always do, when we make a big financial commitment, because without their support, uh, we wouldn't be able to do it. So I would call this a red letter day for the Redbirds. It's certainly uh, an exciting time. I've gotten multiple texts and calls and from all generations of how in the world were the Cardinals able to get Nolan Arenado and uh, you know, we're, we're fortunate that we were able to make it happen. So Brian, at this point, I would uh, kick it back to you for um, the next speaker. Okay, Bill, thank you for those comments. And uh, now we will uh, turn over to John Mosellock, Cardinals President of Baseball Operations. I to unmute myself. Um, first off, um, this is a very exciting day. I can only echo what, what Bill said, but I, I think I need to first start off with just thanking everyone, um, starting with you, Mr. DeWitt, um, Mike Gersh, Randy Flores, Moises Rodriguez. I mean, these guys uh, spent tireless hours trying to get this done. I also want to show some gratitude towards Major League Baseball to helping us push this over, over the finish line and uh, as well as thank the Colorado Rockies for their patience during this process. Um, but at this time, I really wanna just welcome Nolan and his wife, Laura, to the city of St. Louis. Um, this is an amazing day for them, for the Cardinals, and I can't tell you how excited all of us are for, for seeing this type of talent, this type of player, this type of personality 
joining our club. And, and you know, needless to say, the feedback I've gotten from players and um, other people in the game, it just uh, really echoes what type of player he is and how he'll fit in with this organization and this club. So um, it really makes it feel even that much better. But, you know, I asked myself this question recently on, on how does a deal like this happen? And I feel that you, you need a lot of patience, you need a level of persistency, and you need opportunity and to be opportunistic. This is, and you also need an owner that's willing to take a chance. Um, this was not an easy deal to put together. There was multiple levels of, of, of complications, um, multiple levels of hurdles that were hit, uh, but, but we continued to do it. And the feeling we have of, of, of making this happen is, is some level of relief, some level of ex exhaustion, but we think it's worth it. And, you know, ultimately seeing baseball come back in a couple of weeks, I think we're, we're all looking forward to that. We're all hopeful that we can have a, a normal season. And when I, when I reflect on the moment of today, we realize it, it, it is a special day. But we hope it's really uh, just the first step in, in many years of success, having Nolan on our club. So at this point, uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Brian, and uh, thank you. Thanks, Mo. Uh, Nolan, uh, if you're ready, uh, if, if you've got any opening comments, feel free. You're not obligated by any means. We can jump into questions right away. But uh, if no, you've got I, uh, I got a few things. You know, I, first of all, Mr. Uh, Mr. DeWitt and uh, Mo, thank you uh, for the hard work. Um, I know this wasn't easy. And uh, thanks to my agent, Joel, you know, I heard it was a grind and uh, they probably know how it feels to play 162 right there, just trying to negotiate this contract. So, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful, very thankful to be a Cardinal, a great organization with great history. And uh, me and my family are really excited to be a part of it. So uh, I just want to thank you guys. Thanks, Nolan, and, and welcome. Uh, at this point, we will start with the questions. Again, I ask that you please use the uh, raise your hand reaction button, and we will uh, call you. Keep your microphone muted when you're not speaking to avoid any background noise. And uh, we'll start with questions first with Derek Gould of St. Louis Post-Dispatch. And if you could please also uh, note who you're directing your question towards. Thank you. I'd like to direct this question towards Nolan. Uh, Nolan, Derek, cover the Cardinals for the post-dispatch. I wonder what this last, you kind of described it there with the grind. What was this last eight, nine days like for you as you kind of knew what you were on the cusp of, but also all the things that had to be cleared? Were you anxious, pensive? Was there an excitement as you're there working out? Yeah, um, I mean, probably Mo and those guys would probably speak on a little bit more than I could, but, you know, I – it was, it was tough. You know, I knew it was, you know, you're hearing that was getting close and you never knew. Um, I never, I didn't want to jump the gun and get too excited. Um, but <clears throat> once I heard that it was done, I was, you know, thrilled, you know, I'm very excited to join this team. You know, it's a bittersweet moment, right? You know, I, I'm going to miss some of the boys on the, on the Rockies. You know, I got to know them, got to know some of those coaches for a long time. And I've known a lot of them since I was like 18 years old, you know, and I'm 29 now. So, you know, I have some relationships that I'll cherish for the rest of my life over there, but coming to a team like St. Louis with great players and great history, it was, you know, I'm just super excited. Um, I've always admired this organization from afar. You know, I told Mo the story when I was a rookie, we went to St. Louis with, and I remember Tulo was just the first thing he told me when we got there is like, just watch the way these guys play the game and you're going to learn or you're going to learn something. And uh, he was quite right um, about that because this team was extremely talented and they did the little things to win ball games. And that's something that I've always admired about this organization. Benjamin Hockman, I know you know Nolan from your Denver days. Hey, Nolan. Um, yeah. Welcome to St. Louis. I uh, just want to ask you uh, about the idea of winning a World Series championship. You've won basically everything, most everything else in baseball. Can you put into words your hunger, desire to win it all? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, that's the dream, right? You know, as a kid, you dream of winning a World Series, and that is still the dream now. And uh, to, to join this organization that, uh, you know, they care about winning and they want to get things done. That's, it's really exciting. You know, they, they're always competitive and that's something that, 
you know, got my attention. And uh, of course, the goal is always that. The whole goal is get the playoffs, but we have to set goals first. Let's get to spring training, get our timing down. We'll move into the season. Hopefully, God willing, healthy. Move into the season, play as many games we can, win the hopefully God willing, win the division, and then make, keep making our way up. You know, we got to set the goals like that, and I think that's what we'll do. Um, I, you know, I'm excited to join this staff because this team has more playoff experience than I've ever had. You know, I'm I'm just a piece to the puzzle here, and uh, I'm excited to be a part of this group. You know, I know they're going to help me and guide me along just like I can help them in this game also. So it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, Randy Carricker, ESPN 101, St. Louis. Hey, Nolan, uh, a couple of things. Number one, can you give us the proper pronunciation of your last name? And secondly, we've heard over the last couple of days about your legendary work ethic. Where did that come from, and uh, how does it manifest itself for you? Yeah, well, last name's Arenado. Um I mean, you can call it whatever you want, you know, it's all good, but Arnado is how you say it. Um, but, uh, you know, I think just growing up around Todd, Helton, Troy Tulowitzki, you know, guys that work so hard. And, you know, when I was a young player, I see the success that they're having and I wasn't having as much success as them. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I need to pick it up a little bit. I mean, these guys are working so much harder than I am and I probably, and they're having such success. Maybe I need to start doing that. So that's just kind of how it all started. And, just wanting to stay in the big leagues, you know, that was, you know, your goal is to get there, but you want to stay after, and then you set different goals as it goes on, you know, you want to win, make an all-star team and win a gold glove, win, you know, do those things. You just, you, you just want to set these goals and continue to accomplish them. And uh, that's just kind of how it all started. Ron Blum, Associated Press. Hey, Nolan, and for you and for Bill, with all the excitement for the trade in this season, does part of you worry that given the relationship between the parties that a work stoppage could be likely for spring training next year? I'll let probably Bill go first on that one. <laughs> uh, you know, Ron, um, hopefully no. Uh, and you know, it's incumbent upon both parties to try to reach a mutually beneficial agreement. And I know both parties will make every effort to do that. So, uh, you know, that's the last thing I'm thinking about right now. I'm <laughs> thinking about spring training this year and uh, hopefully having a great season. So, you know, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds and the issues and, and all the things that uh, are important to both sides. But historically, uh, MLB and the Players Association have avoided work stoppages for a long, long time. It's longer than any other uh, professional sport. So uh, let's hope that that continues uh, through next year. Hey, Nolan, your thoughts uh, on? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I hope we don't have a work stoppage. I hope we are able to play. I think, I think both sides want to play. And that's what, you know, especially with this 2020 season, how it got delayed and all the things that are going on in our country, it probably wouldn't be very good if we had a stoppage. So. You know, I, I hope we are able to play and we are able to settle those disputes or whatever they are and get them done. And I believe we can. Um, there's still there's always there's always an agreement there. And I believe there can be. Thank you. Jeff Jones, uh, Belleville News Democrat. Hi, Nolan, um, can, can you speak maybe to some of the connections you've had to players in the current team throughout your career? I know that you and Paul Goldschmidt, for example, have played together in a, in a couple of spots. I know that. Maybe we're not technically on the current team here, but you and Yadier Molina, I think, as well, have a relationship. Can you sort of speak to what those connections were like and, and how they can maybe inform what coming to St. Louis will be like for you? Yeah, well, you know, I got to know – I've gone on vacation trips with uh, the Carpenter family, so I got to know him a little bit, talking to Matt. And um, obviously, got a lot of respect for Yadi. I've always enjoyed watching him play and how he – you know, he changes the game with how good he is and talking to him. But there's a couple of guys there, you know um, – you know, Mark Reynolds played there, you know, Descalso, you know, I just asked those questions to those guys. You know, I don't know a whole lot of them, but, you know, I'm excited to get to know them. But Goldschmidt for sure is a friend of mine. Um, I consider him a good friend. And uh, obviously he's one of my favorite players of all time. And playing against him, like I said, I played against him in rookie ball and then playing against him in the big leagues. And and then now we're on the same team. It's pretty cool. Um, so, no, it's, it, you know, definitely talking to them and getting to know them will probably make this transition a lot easier. And, uh you know, that, that, that'll make it a lot easier to get ready and hopefully uh, get into it. Zach Silver with uh, Cardinals.com. Hey, Nolan. Uh, welcome to St. Louis. Um, 
just curious what you already you, you mentioned you came out here with Tulo and he told you just to observe and, and to uh, you know learn from what the organization does what do what did what do you know about the organization what do you know about the city and what are you just most, most excited to learn about St. Louis well obviously you know you know how good they are you know the, the winning tradition the history behind them and the great players that came through this organization you know obviously admire you know, just the way they've won consistently. So, and they're so good. Um, and the fans are amazing. You know, I remember going there, you know, playing every time they, you know, they have a lot of respect for good play and, you know, their respect for the visiting team also. And uh, yeah, I remember I made diving plays there and, you know, I feel like they're like clapping for me, like it was a home game in Colorado and it was in St. Louis, you know, and I remember Charlie Blackman had an at-bat in St. Louis, his first at-bat and the announcer thought it was his debut. And it wasn't. It was like his second year in the league. And the Cardinal fans gave him like a standing ovation. It was pretty funny. <laughs> so we're all like, what is going on here? What did he do? But uh, it just shows you the respect they have. And uh, it was pretty cool to see that, you know. And it just shows you that, they, you know, they just respect, you know, the game and respect people that make their make their uh, the way to the big leagues. So it's pretty cool to be a part of that. Uh, David Wallstein, New York Times. Hi, Nolan. Um, I'm just wondering um, if you're – surprised at how quickly things change with the Rockies, you know, after, after signing your extension there and probably planning to spend the rest of your career there. And then do you feel bad for, you know, you mentioned Charlie and Trevor and the guys that are left behind? Um, you know, I, you know, you know, like when, when I signed in Colorado, I signed there with the intent to be there for the rest of my career. That was the, the, that was the attempt, but you know, it wasn't meant to be, you know, the last few years have been tough and, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people are probably bothered by this, but, you know, uh, I'm not the first contract to get moved after a couple of years. You know, it, it's part of it, it happens a lot in this game. You know, it happened to Stan. It's happening to me. You know, Lindor's another guy who, you know, I know he has a long term deal, but, you know, I thought he, we all kind of figured he was going to be an Indian for a long time also. But it's just part of the game. It happens. And, uh, you know, I, I feel bad. I, I mean, I, I don't feel bad because I'm excited. You know, I'm excited to move on. And I'm, 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 but I, I, you know, I miss those guys, you know, they're my, my great friends. I consider them brothers and, you know, I, they got a special place in my heart. You know, we were able to do some great things and I've known Charlie since I was 17, 18 years old also, you know, and I got to know Trevor <clears throat> and, you know, I got to meet a lot of great people there, but, you know, the, you know, the intention was to sign there and be there, but things change and I couldn't be happier to, for it to change and be in this situation now. And Fredrickson, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Nolan, uh, welcome to St. Louis. Uh, I'm curious uh, how your shoulders feeling and uh, kind of what the offseason looked like for you with that. And if, you'd, if, if you're willing to share, how much do you think that affected you um, last season offensively, that, that injury? Well, yeah, I mean, the first few months of the off, or the first month of the offseason, it was kind of tough, you know, uh, couldn't do a whole lot, you know, didn't lift, couldn't really lift and couldn't hit or do anything really a whole lot. So I had to take it easy, but, you know, I got treatment. I got the right trainers and the right people helping me. And I feel really good again. I'm, you know, I, I'm not worried about it. I don't think, you know, I don't know unless something crazy happens, but I, I don't expect this to be a problem in the future. But, um, and yeah, you know, it was tough last year. Um, you know, I don't want to make the excuse that it was only because of that, but, you know, it wasn't easy playing injured. <clears throat> Didn't feel good being hurt. Um, I feel like I'm in a better place now. My swing is better. I feel like I can finish high again. And, uh, you know, I, I expect to be back to normal and be back to who I am. So, you know, uh, last year was a tough year, you know, I, but I, you know, I know I'm better than that. So I expect to be. Uh, Brian Walton. Owen, what are your thoughts about playing your home games in the ballparks of the Central Division versus the West, where you've been your entire career to date? Well, it's going to be a different and it's going to be an adjustment. Um, obviously, playing, you know, you, I played in those stadiums a lot throughout my career, so I kind of already know them. But to be there more consistently will be different. But I'm excited. You know, I, I, I wish stadiums, a, I know it's a big field, but I love it and the fan base. And I know it's a great place to play. And I'm really excited to play there. And then obviously, the rivalry with the Cubs will be great going to Wrigley. Um, I've always enjoyed that stadium. It's such a great place with great fans. Um, Cincy, we got a good team. And Pittsburgh, it's all great ballparks, you know, parks that, you know, I, you know, I've never, you know, I've always enjoyed going to and, uh, you know, I feel like it's going to be fun. You know, I heard the travel is real easy, which is great. So that's going to be nice. So, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to play in this division. It's something new and that, that gets me really excited to go. 
Troy Rank, uh, looks like you're a moving car. Hope you're not driving. No, I'm not driving. I promise, Brian. Thanks for Nolan. Good to see you. Congratulations on the move. Thanks, when, Troy. Uh, you signed the deal and you were the face of the franchise. And Dick Mumford said earlier today that nine months ago you asked to be traded and they basically there that nothing was changing that was was it just the issue of you just felt like you could no longer win there and that this was going to be the only solution uh, I mean that's just what Rocky fans want to know and, and it's about 99 percent leaning in support of you but is there something that happened where you realized this was going to be inevitable Nolan um you know I think <clears throat> yeah I mean when you have a big like I said earlier when you have a contract like mine and you're losing, you know, usually, you know, I think a lot of these contracts get moved and that's just kind of what happened now. Um, you know, I want, like I said, I signed there to be there for a long time and I wanted to win there. It didn't work out. So, uh, you know, you move on and that's what I'm going to do, you know, and I'm really excited to be here. When you look at it and you saw what happened with Holiday and these other guys, do you see this as a chance to kind of, you know, where you're playing meaningful games? They've had 13 straight winning seasons. How enticing is that when you wake up, you know, for every day and feel like you're a contender? Well, exactly. I think that's exactly it. You know, I made this decision based on <clears throat> hopefully go to a competitive team, a team that, you know, has great tradition. And I believe St. Louis has that. Obviously, you said they have 13 straight winning seasons. You know, hopefully we can throughout my career, we can make it even more. So that's the goal. And um, like I said, I'm really excited to join this team. I feel like this is a really good team to do special things. And uh you know, I can't wait to get to Jupiter. Last thing, what would you tell Rockies fans today? I mean, they are, they're, it's almost like they're in mourning. I guess, what would your message be to them as this thing's now official? Well, you know, I, I got a lot of love for the Rocky fans. You know, they've always supported me throughout my career. Um, and, you know, I, I truly care about them. They got a special place in, in my heart and uh, in my family's heart. You know, we, this, this, this move. You know, it's it's a, it's a we're really excited, but it you know our families it's crazy because Colorado is like our second home. So we loved it, we love those fans, we appreciate the support, and you know, I, the only thing I would tell them is that I did my best and I gave them my all, and that's all I could really do. Thank you, my man. All right, Derek Gould, St. Louis Post Dispatch. Nolan, a few times during this, you've described uh, obviously visiting St. Louis as a rookie, and then also knowing some of the players. Well, you had a lot of power with your no trade clause to determine where you would go. How much did you look into the future of the Cardinals and what it might look like if you were to spend, say, the second half of your career here and the team that they would put around you? Well, you know, I saw who was on that team now. And, you know, obviously Goldschmidt's going to be there for the next four or five years. You know, and I kind of saw the end of my contract and I saw the rest of the players. You know, it's all kind of similar at the same time. Um as development goes, I mean, I'm not, I mean, that's something I'm not worried about with St. Louis. I mean, they always bring up guys that are ready to go, you know, and they always, they're always good about producing players that are ready to go and contribute. And so, I mean, that's something, you know, and I'm not too worried about, and, you know, they have a good pitching staff, good defense, and hopefully we get the best catcher back and uh, we'll keep it moving. But, you know, uh, they have a great team. You know, I really believe that, like I said, they've, They've had 13 straights winning seasons, so that's that's enticing enough to me. And I know they care about winning, and I believe they'll do everything we can to win. As, as part of this, you were able to get the second opt-out that we all know about. What are some of the th factors that you'll consider as you look to whether you stick around? Because you'll have that choice twice to make whether you want to go somewhere else. Yeah, well, you know, I plan on sticking around. So, you know, that's my goal. I plan on staying here for a long time. You know, I, I've said that once in Colorado, but I truly, you know, I, I mean it. You know, I, I expect to be here for a long time. I'm, I'm not worried about that. Thanks, Nolan. Mm -hmm. Andy Kierker, ESPN 101, St. Louis. Hey, Mo, uh, you've been talked about with the Rockies and, and Nolan for a long time. When's the first time you ever called Colorado and expressed interest in Nolan Arenado? And when did you finally reach the point – I guess the, the question is, what was the biggest hurdle? The, Bill talked about how complicated this was. What was the biggest complicated hurdle that you had to jump to get this deal done? Yeah, to start off with um, chronological order, we did have some interest in, in Nolan uh, this past off season. And then uh, 
I think it really sort of started gaining a little bit of momentum in, in the month of December of uh, 2020. And then as, as we sort of worked our way to where we are today, it just seemed like every time we thought we might get somewhere, something ha happened. And so like, there was not one particular hurdle that stands out as like, oh no, but there were, I, mean, I can tell you like, everybody that was involved in this deal will tell you like, every time we thought we were close, something else happened. And then um, you asked the question to Nolan, like how he felt over the last like 10 days. I can tell you like the last week or so, I keep feeling nauseous. Like it just felt like something was gonna go wrong. And, you know, it, it, it just took a lot of patience on, on everyone's side to get it to where we are. And uh, again, just grateful for everybody's participation to get to the finish line. Benjamin Hockman, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Uh, for Mo and Bill DeWitt, uh, on the topic of potentially playing in the World Series and winning the World Series, can you put into your own words um, why you think this St. Louis Cardinals team now can contend for that and maybe the difference between the idea of getting into the playoffs and making a run in the playoffs? I'll defer to Bill first. Okay. Um, well, as I said before, having a player like Nolan playing third base uh, and setting an example for particularly some of the young, talented players we have uh, and veterans as well, uh, it's just going to uplift, uh, I think, our team overall. And we have some young guys who are coming into their own, uh, and we have veterans who you know pretty much what to expect. So uh, I, I, I think this is, a, in a way, a perfect storm uh, from a position player standpoint. Defense, uh, you know, is a hallmark of Cardinal teams and certainly is of this one with uh, Nolan at third and has been. Um, we have a good pitching staff, as Nolan referenced. Uh, deep, we've got good young pitching coming and we've got good young players uh, coming. So. I feel like we're deep uh, at this point in time uh, with uh, what we have in the organization. And this is, uh, you know, what we accomplished last year, given the challenges and, and how we had players, you know, throwing into pillows while they were up in the hotel in Milwaukee to maintain and stay in shape. Uh, you know, it was pretty remarkable. And, we actually were in position to win that first round. It just didn't work out. So I'm very optimistic. I think we've got a good club, uh, one that could contend with anybody. Yeah, I, I would echo that. I, I think simply put, um, we might not be done. I mean, we're still looking at things that, that might transpire between now and the time we get down to Jupiter. Um, there's always opportunities and we're going to continue to keep looking, but with the addition of, of Nolan, we, we think, you know, we went from a, a good to great team. And, um, but the supporting cast or the or really as teammates, you know, we have a lot of um, belief and faith that they're going to be good. And so when you look at all the things we possibly could have done this off season, um, you know, clearly our target w was Nolan and we were able to get it. And, you know, we, we hope it is the difference maker. Polo Asensio, Cardinal Spanish Radio. Mute. Are you unmuted, Polo? All right, let's. There, uh, there, there you go. Uh, I, 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 you can tell my radio guy I'm not used to Zoom. But uh, hey, Nolan, first of all, bienvenido a San Luis. You're going to love it here. I've been here for four years, so I can tell you it's great. Now, you have Puerto, Puerto Rican and Cuban in you. This is a very important question. Tu español. ¿Qué tal está tu español? No, I do not speak any Spanish, and you could blame my parents for that one. Uh, <laughs> okay. Hey. I, I, will, I will blame them from that, for that. But now I'm going to blame you for this. Over the last couple of days, I have text or call, talked to a couple of our guys, a couple of our players, and I can tell you every single one of them are very excited for you to come here. You've been Thanks. called Caballo. You know what Caballo 
Ohio means, right? You are you are a horse. You call the, the missing piece, the, the guy that we needed. This guy is going to take us to the next level. When you hear that your new teammates feel like that towards you, is that a little extra pressure for you? Or you welcome that kind of pressure, pressure because that's why you wanted to be here, right? To be in a team that is going to give you a chance to take yourself and help them get to the next level. Can you please uh, answer that or talk a little bit about that? And thank you again. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, <clears throat> well, that means a lot that they, you know, they want me here and they're going to, they appreciate me, um, but they appreciate me for who I am. So that's just who I need to be out there is I just need to be me. And that's what I'm going to do. And it's not extra pressure. You know, I think the goal is to win. We all have the same goal. And um, as much as they're happy to have me, I'm just as happy to be with them. I mean, they're going to help me. They're going to guide me. I mean, like I said, they've been in the playoffs more than I have and they've, they've been around a lot longer than I have and, They've, they've done some big things in this game. So I'm excited to be a part of them. So it's going to be great. You know, uh, I, I'm going to go out there and be myself, help this team win as many games as I can, and hopefully we get there and get to where we want to be at the finish line. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful to join a great organization. Like I said, an organization with great history and uh, great tradition. And this is, a, this is a very exciting time. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Kyle Newman, <clears throat> Denver Post. Hey, Nolan, nice to see you. Hey, so I know obviously you said you cherished a lot of your memories in Colorado, but over the last year, year and a half, as the, the losing was going on, how much your, your desire to, to leave was based on that relationship or lack thereof with, with Jeff Breidich and then also around the team's plan or lack of plan to contend in the near future? Well, you know, my relationship with the Rockies is just fine. You know, I think, listen, I, I'm, I'm not going to speak here and talk about the bad things. There's no, there's no bad things. It was great. I had a great time in Colorado. I loved it there. You know, like I said, I, I did the best I could there. I have no regrets. Um, this, you know, it just didn't work out. The last few years has been tough and contracts, like I said, this is, they get moved. That's just part of it. It's part of the game, unfortunately, but it is what it is. <clears throat> and I couldn't be happier to join this team, but you know, uh, yeah, the last few years have were tough in Colorado. Um, and, uh, you know, I, but, you know, I'm, I'm not really part of the team anymore, and I don't have a whole lot to say about where they're headed or where they're not. You know, I just know that I'm, I'm joining a great team, and uh, I did the best I could there, and uh, just keep it moving. And over this last season there, obviously you're dealing with a shoulder injury and the team was scuffling a little bit. Uh, did you expect to get traded maybe by the deadline? Was that weighing you down kind of mentally throughout the year? No. I mean, I didn't expect to get traded during the season last year. I mean, it was only 60 games. I think the goal was to just try to sneak in and get into the playoffs somehow. And unfortunately we didn't get there. Thanks. Sir. Okay. Ben Fredericks in St. Louis post-dispatch. Uh, this one is for Mr. DeWitt. Um, Bill, you took some criticism and not too long ago for comments you made about kind of the, the state of, of baseball. And there was obviously a lot of talk about uncertainty about this off season and next you use the word incumbent on the team to, Make a make a trade like this when one became become available. Um, I guess what do you think it says to folks who maybe questioned your, um, you know, your your desire to win uh, at, at the highest level during these uncertain times to go out and trade for a player of of Nolan's caliber right now? You know, I think uh, as I mentioned earlier, over the past twenty five years, we've we've been pretty committed to winning, and you know, we've taken chances in in deals, and a lot of them have worked out, and some haven't worked out. Uh, and when we have had an opportunity to get premium players, uh, we've made every effort to get them. And, uh, you know, one thing we do know is premium players continue to be premium players. So, uh, you know, this was uh, an opportunity we couldn't pass up and one that uh, we had thought about a while. I know uh, Mo was asked earlier how long he's thought about Nolan Arenado. And I, I have to say that, you know, we always sort of dreamed that something like this could happen or might have happened. Um, but, you know, when he signed the long-term deal, obviously we didn't think anything would come of, of that. Uh, but we're always opportunistic in seeing uh, players who can take our club to the next level. And I think we've demonstrated that over the years. But it's hard to do. I mean, everyone's out there trying to win. And, you know, unless you control – enough premium players, uh, you know, it's very difficult to do it from the outside by making trades or signing free agents. And, you know, we, we've, uh, we've been fortunate that the players we have 
secured over the years have, have done the job and really helped the, the core that we've built. So, um, you know, we, we never stop trying and, and we never will as long as I'm around and I know Mo feels the same way. Yeah, we'll take one or two more. We're, we're going over 30 minutes here. Rob Raines, uh, St. Louis. Hey, Nolan, Rob Raines, stlsportspage.com. Did you know how long the Cardinals were interested in you? Had anybody like back and forth with games when you played against Goldie and some of those guys and even back farther than that, did they say, hey, we'd love to have you over here? I mean, was, you know, when did all this kind of really start generating in your mind that you could end up here one day? Um, no, you know, I think once that's signed long term, I think, you know, a lot of those people kind of stop bringing that stuff up. But, you know, I think, you know, I've, I've, like I said, I've, you know, I think they've always like would like to play with me and I look fortunately I can now. But I think, you know, uh, this last this offseason to see that they're pretty interested and and, you know, the, that that really helped. And that made me, you know, think about it a lot more. And obviously we made the great decision to come here. But, yeah, you know, I think. You know, you know, a lot of the guys, you know, there ain't a whole lot of saying that on the field. I think everyone's kind of just focused on playing and stuff like that. But, you know, it, you know, I think, you know, I think whenever you see great players, you'd be like, oh, man, I wonder how playing with them would be. You know, that's how I see Goldschmidt. You know, that's how I see Yachty, um, Adam Wainwright. You know, you're like, oh, wow, that'd be awesome. You know, it's not just them. It's guys across the league. You know, you just you just admire great players and be great to be in a locker room with them. So I'm excited to be in a locker room with the great players on the Cardinals. Ron Blum, Associated Press. Uh, from Mo, uh, you scout a lot of players, and obviously we see what they do on the field. As the Cardinals looked and did background on Nolan, what was it in him as a person that attracted you to him and thought he'd be a good fit for the Cardinals? Well, I think when, when we were doing our due diligence on him, I think his reputation preceded him in, in the sense of, of how much he loves the game of baseball. Um, when, when we think about like culture and, and the type of person we're looking to, to bring into the organization, there's a couple themes that, that, that we always like to, to know the player is interested in. One is, does he like to be around the game of baseball? Um, you can personally Google Nolan and find him playing wiffle ball um, on your own. And when big league players are playing wiffle ball, it just means they love the game, right? And so that's a, that's a telltale. And then the, when I talk to other players about Nolan and what impresses them about him, it always came back to how hard he worked, his desire to learn, high baseball IQ. And those types of things are, are just very attractive to a team. And then knowing that he actually wanted to be a part of the, the Cardinal organization, I think is an, another key point because when you have a player that actually wants to be a part of something, it makes everything else that much better. And you know, I think what Nolan's going to find out when he actually gets here is he's joining a club where players actually want to be here and, and they're, they're all pulling in the same direction. And, you know, that's a compliment from Bill DeWitt to Mike Schilt to all Cardinal employees, because that's how we think. And, you know, ultimately, um, I think that's what really sold us on him fitting in here. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, one last question, Brian Walton, uh, Cardinals Nation. Mo, I know you don't comment on rumors, but um, there were some pretty significant players involved going the other way to Colorado. What can you say about how the negotiations went and the, the decisions about which players the Cardinals would give up in return for Nolan? Yeah, so always um, in, in trade negotiations, there, there's obviously a lot of give and take, and that's where the patience comes in because – you know, I think everybody's trying to understand market value and, and trying to determine what's fair. And, and so I thought we did an amazing job of keeping names out of this deal um, really up until the very end. So um, really kudos to the Rockies and, and the Cardinals for that. But, um, you know, obviously we knew we were going to have to give up something to get Nolan. I mean, he's a, he's a talented player. Um, I'm sure a lot of teams – wish they were sitting where we are today. So we're fortunate. Um, but I, I think I would add that, um, you know, we felt like there was a price that we were going to have to give up or to pay. And, uh, you know, we came to a point where we had a meeting of the minds. So um, from that standpoint, 
you know, we're going to miss Austin Gomber. And, you know, we feel some of the younger players that we gave up do have some upside. And so I think, you know, Colorado is, is, is you know, taking a chance on some future opportunity. And I would imagine some of those names are going to play in, in, in Denver. All thank right. You. Well, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Mo. Thank you, Nolan. Congratulations. And uh, again, thanks thank everyone you. for taking part in today's uh, Cardinals media zoom where we'll get a video recording out to you when it becomes available. Have a great day, everyone. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.